She tries to work as her job demands, but the old man interrupts her and talks to her about his adventures from back in the day. He tried to concentrate on his studies, but he couldn't. His mind was eating him alive, so he grabbed a notebook and expressed himself. His parents always told him to study something that would allow him to make money, but he really wanted to follow his dreams. Today, he's sad. As a kid, he loved books. Throughout time, he bought a lot of them. He had a library's worth of them, but he did nothing creative with them. A group of Nazi skinheads face off against a group of Puerto Ricans in a gladiator-style battle inside a coliseum to entertain a monkey. A young girl shaves her head madly in front of an old man she has tied up to a chair. He does nothing but look at her eyes. He tried to protect his pregnant wife, but upon opening the door he couldn't believe what he saw, a group of cannibals eating her away. All they wanted was to buy one dollar comics, but there were none to be found. His parents always told him that Santa was a nice guy, but when the 25th came around and he got up to see the fat guy, all he found was Satan. He took many photos and videos, but he never really knew what he wanted to do with it. So he just erased the SD's entire memory. They discovered the type of music that would become the most popular around the world 40 years later. They never truly understood how much they loved Lala until she got savagely ran over by a car and they had to bury her in their own backyard. They hadn't seen each other in almost a year. That night they celebrated with pizza, sex, and beer, but not in that exact order. The flea community celebrated what they thought was a successful colonization until the scissors came and they had to flee. The water dripping from the air conditioner continued dripping until his room became an ocean and him a merman. He wrote like crazy thinking his book was the shit, but it was actual shit, the type you would light up in front of someone's house. Social media was too crazy for them, so they left and never looked back. The band started playing and they all went crazy, merely starting what would be a night of friendship and heartbreak. She and her dad were never really close. But on her trip up north, they bonded like never before, finally calling themselves daughter and father. She went out for the night looking for a prey. In the midst of alcohol and kush, she found what she was looking for and had fun all night. The pressure was too deep and he just ended up crying in her arms. She embraced him and told him all was going to be okay. He would jerk off so much 24-7, he eventually tore off his own foreskin. They were the greatest of friends, but social media beef ended their love for one another. Now they don't even say hi to each other. Salimos en la noche. La juventud everywhere, sueltos como gavete entrelazados entre birras, gares, weed, smoke, neon lights y musiquita en cada esquina. A lo lejos se escucha un plop, plop, plop. Y todos corren por su vida, mientras un chamaco duerme en un bache de su propia sangre. Los bisabuelos se casaron en edad temprana y vivieron en el campo donde tuvieron 10 hijos. Los abuelos hicieron algo similar. Los hijos bajaron al pueblo y tuvieron menos hijos. Ahora los nietos tratan de encontrar un futuro, en una isla pobre donde la vida se gana día a día. Jaime nunca tuvo un ejemplo paternal a seguir, solo tuvo a su madre, Giselda, a su lado. El día que el cáncer se la llevó, él no sabía qué hacer. Por mucho tiempo no sabía cómo lidiar con esta situación. Cuando descubrió que tendría una hija, solo pensó en un nombre, Giselda. Juanita siempre quiso ser una fashion designer, pero estudió biología porque sus padres querían que fuera doctora. Al fin de sus días, ella decidió intentar ser diseñadora, pero su familia y compañeros la ridiculizaban. Juanita nunca fue feliz. The students studied all week long but failed. 
The professor didn't give a shit. The student fell into depression. Never finished the goal he had set. Ended up in debt and working two jobs, supermarket and fast food, just to make some money and survive. El chamaco nunca pudo salir de su caverna interna. Reía para no llorar porque si lloraba lo menospreciaban. Siempre fue esclavo de sus padres abusivos, tomando parte del asesinato de su propia hermana. El chamaco nunca sobrevivió al exterior. Trauma eterno. They lost their parental figures young and constantly ran across the streets, never finding someone to guide them except the rules of survival. Some have stayed in the streets, others have managed to grow, and some sadly have fallen victim to the streets. Solo tenía algo de ella luego de su muerte, y se la arrebataron de sus manos. Solo le quedaba algo que hacer, aunque tuviera que volver a una vida a la que no quería volver. Al día de hoy, todavía busca escapar de esa vida. He tried to find a job in order to support himself, but he hated them all and was never accepted in any of them. Apparently he was overprepared, so he dedicated himself to what he truly loved, but died in the process of finding success. Today, he still isn't remembered. Se pasó toda la vida escribiendo, cantando, bailando, actuando, pintando, dibujando, haciendo videos, sacando fotos, expresando, en fin, creando para poder tener paz mental. Al fin de sus días, sus nietos adoptaron algunas de estas destrezas y tuvieron un poco de felicidad. They lost it all on that date. To this day, under a lot of stress and ever going humiliation, they fight to get back the lives they once had. She never truly found her place in the world, always falling to the back of the room as an outsider, the lonely one with a cup of beer in her hand looking at the crowd as they mingled. Then she came to her life, and it all changed in unimaginable ways. He tried to declutter his room, and in the process, he found a few dollars, but he failed in his goal. Various items still needed to be deleted in order to bring space. The dog and the mouse were always good friends, but then the cat came and chaos erupted as the cat would always try to eat the mouse, and the dog would always try to protect his homie. His mother would always abuse him physically and emotionally. Later as an adult, after committing a series of horrific murders, he would say she was the source. He even went as far as killing her and her neighbor. Now he lays on the ground, being eaten by worms. El día fue como cualquier otro. El taxista recogía gente y los llevaba de destino en destino, pero en este día en particular dos personas pudieron apreciar la vida del caballero. Lo poco que se ganaba era para que él y su madre pudieran comer. María se llevó su hogar. The wings of death were worshipped all across the universe. All beings were loyal to this interdimensional deity. However, people saw it fall at the hands of another titan, one much more acceptable to mankind because they created it, when they tried to be gods themselves. He just sat there doing nothing with his life, always consuming, letting the songs and videos on autoplay. He dedicated all his life to consumptions, but never to production, and now, in his late life, he attempts to create a masterpiece. Will he do it? Only time will tell. He never truly got to be with her a lot. She was only five the other day, a.k.a. the last time he saw her. Today she turns 15, a.k.a. the first time he sees her in a decade. She doesn't even recognize him. Time flies fast and he only wishes he could have been there for her a bit more. So many years lost in jail and, in the end, the truth they stated from the start came forward. A través de los años, el sistema le seguía fallando y los dos señores jamás aceptaron las mentiras que le adjudicaban. Un día la verdad salió a la luz e incluso otra persona resultó ser culpable. Ambos señores están libres, uno de la vida y el otro de la mente. He would call himself a scientist, but it was his biggest lie, one which led to multiple people dying in prison, and he never felt guilty about it. Who's the real criminal? He was always looked upon for not having a normal job, but he was always happy, and he died doing what he loved, 
and nobody could take that away from him. Nobody. It was a little bit of bait, but it was enough for him to bite, and he suffered from the consequences immediately. But that's what happens when you follow your instincts too much. Sometimes you gotta think before you act. He would tell himself afterwards. She was never encouraged to practice her sport because it was too masculine. Later on, she shifted the way said sport was viewed due to her popularity and greatness. Today, she looks back at it, proud of her achievements, then and beyond. The pirates settled and found no use for their treacherous acts no more, but then greed came forth from the empires and they were filled with energy once again to rebel against the system. Arrested one time, arrested a second, both times considered innocent, but the last time he was sentenced to death and never got the chance to defend himself properly. Sus identidades estaban completas a esos 37 y 39 años, pero luego llegó su hijo y todo cambió por completo, descubriendo así nuevos aspectos de sus personalidades que jamás imaginaban. De ahí en adelante tuvieron una aventura increíble que solo ellos podrían explicar. He wanted to be a kid and have fun, but life at times isn't fair, so he lost his innocence and was forced to become an adult at the mere age of 13. Today, as an adult, he still acts like a little kid at times, sort of wondering what would have been. She was never encouraged to do much with her life, but she had big ambitions. There's a reason why today she's not only a mother of two, but also the head volcanologist of a research project going on in volcanic areas of Alaska. He never really knew what he wanted in life, so he just went with the flow of what people wanted him to be. Happiness was never something he actually knew. He thought he was happy because of his financial stability, but he was never truly happy inside. They were worked to the bone and never given any sort of benefits. Some stayed, some left. Today, the company is one of the biggest empires in the world, and it shows no signs of slowing down. He never owned his responsibilities. It wasn't until he found out about his long-lost daughter that he finally knew that he had to grow in some way or another. Today, he looks in the mirror and is proud. In the beginning, there was a kid who killed a family with his car. Later on, he got away with plagiarism. Eventually, he became the governor of the country that saw his birth. To this day, he still gets away with everything. He was one of the cops at the forefront of every line when they were called to defend the government. Later, his daughter opened his eyes to the truth behind the government's corruption. Now, he takes sick days when protests are in full effect. There once was a kid who was born into a family that would turn out to have one of the most corrupt governors in Puerto Rico. That kid looked up to his dad and in turn became as, if not more corrupt than his father, and he would not resign even when the people didn't want him. El país se une y el mundo también, pero el gobe no se quita por su hambre de poder. El pueblo grita y grita, pero él se queda en su silla sin el brazo torcer. A la vieja edad el tiempo le llegó, y de todo el mal se arrepintió. Everybody across the island failed to get a good night's sleep when they realized their revolution might not go in vain, and there existed hope of their governor actually resigning to his position. All she wanted was for her fave artist to drop her album, but she couldn't do the samples. So her GF did the next best thing. She made a playlist with the samples mixed with songs from the artist's discog, and played it to her as a surprise, and they danced all the way to El Hangueo. She had the potential to be one of the greatest rock stars the world had ever seen, but doors were closed to her. However, she didn't let that stop her. She made her own path and proved everybody who stood in her way wrong. Today, she is an icon that many look up to. When they went inside their workplace, they just saw a future with no progress. But they just stayed there and saved a few dollars they could in order to invest in their own future endeavors. He was meant to be the chosen one, but he disappointed his fans and they left him. Now he survives out of the little money he receives monthly and dedicates himself to a simple life with his family, 
waiting for inspiration to strike once more. She was always put to the side, never accepted. All she wanted was her father's love, but he never showed it. In his last days, he tried his best to be the best parent he could be, but it was too late. She had learned to live on her own, without her father's love. He thought he had it all figured. His future never looked brighter. He had a job, a loving girlfriend, a home they shared. It was all good, except for one thing. He never really pursued his dream. There was always that thought in his mind and eventually depression governed him. She walked and walked and walked and walked all across Ponce, but eventually melted and became one with the pavement, all due to the summer heat. He spent his entire birthday getting tattooed. Afterwards, he ate some of his mom's homemade food. It was a great 28th. He lost many years making people happy and proud, never doing what he truly wanted. To this day, he still does it. All because he never learned to say no. They had fought previously, now they sat in the airplane and she was still pissed. So she called him off right on the spot. He tried to stay put and keep a poker face, but that later ended with him getting a hit in the face. She later grabbed the Gucci bag and left the plane. The old man took the kid in as his own, after the kid's parent had passed away. However, the old man would later come to regret this as his life would be taken away by the person he once called son. He gave away his life so his wife could go on with their unborn child. Today he isn't remembered by anybody except those who knew about his efforts. He might have saved the world and given his family a chance but his heroics will never go acknowledged. He was never truly a believer of the Bible's words, but upon seeing the chaotic situations of his time, he started taking the old text more seriously and eventually committed acts he never thought possible as power went over his head. Through hard work and sacrifice, she managed to be the first in her family to go to college, and even there she had to face the challenges of a system that asked her more from her financially, but despite all of these circumstances, she managed to accomplish her goals. A storm was coming and the effects of PTSD were triggered instantly. Thus, they ran quickly to get ready, filling their gas tanks along with their houses with essentials. Then they waited for nature's force to come. Fui a recortarme y pedí lo regular, la cero por los lados y atrás. Luego noté mi error. Había olvidado que eso lo puedo pedir cuando estoy más pelú. Me vi en el espejo y me parecía a Anuel AA. Rápido vi los chistes. Fenuel WF junto a las carcajadas. Pedí la cero en toda la cabeza. She was raised in a difficult home that scarred her. Eventually, though she tried to be the best mom possible, she also scarred her kids. Ultimately, she lost their custody battle with her ex-husband. Today she sits in a cold home, counting the days until she can't see them again. They met each other dancing, like that Frankie Ruiz song, and still today, 11 years later, they continue to be together. Sure, it hasn't been easy, but through work and learning, they've grown and become better people, better lovers. The toxicity they shared across social media would always gain negative attention. Then they would question why nobody in their field would ever want to collaborate with them. It was fear that led him down this path. He left his girlfriend behind along with her newborn. He tried to start a new life, but he fell with the wrong crowd. It was all because of fear, fear of losing freedom. Now, in his last seconds, there's no one to save him, only fear. I just sat there. I believe it was fifth grade Spanish class, or something like that. Suddenly, my teacher answered an urgent phone call. She was hysterical. We didn't know what was going on, but later that day, we all knew. It was an event that would mark all generations. Every year, he would show students the newspaper. Remember this day. It will change you and the generations that come after. He would say, showing the paper with a picture of the towers on fire. Today, fear is at an all-time high. This event surely played a part in it. The only thing he did was do his job, but it was too controversial for the people looking from outside. 
So he was shunned to the outskirts of the world, to a deserted place where only a pond, a tree, and a bed were provided for him. All he wanted was a fun weekend with his girlfriend and her friends, but it ended in tragedy. Everyone but him was possessed by demonic entities from other dimensions, and he had to kill them all, losing a hand himself. He still remembers that weekend, but nobody believes his story. They let him drown in the lake and never even noticed until years later when his mom snapped and came to the lake to take revenge on the descendants of those who let her child drown. It was a party and the drunk wizards just wanted something to eat to bring down the munchies. So they ordered a pizza, but they didn't know their gibberish conversation on the phone would anger their delivery guy. Later that night, they had to fend off demonic flying pizza slices. They were known as the band that took down neo-Nazis, and their fierce power was put to the test one more night where an army of neo-Nazis accompanied by Nazis brought back from the dead were all taken down once again by the duo's ferocious bass and drum combination. They wanted to get ahead in life, even if it meant breaking the law. It all went well for a while until a man died in their hands. Nothing was the same after that. Trust went out the door. The decline came as fast as the rise. She wanted to sell it all and move to the city, but he refused to change. Sin fueled this man so he would do whatever he needed to gain what he wanted, even if it meant shifting his young son's point of view. Eventually she would end up in a ditch, with bugs eating her up. All they wanted to do was take a nice vacation in the nearest rural area to them and all was going well until they pissed off a local family. Two of them were raped, two of them wounded, one of them dead. Life would never be the same. After their son's death, they wanted to do whatever it took to forget such a tragic moment in their life. He went to the psychologist and grieved as best as he could. She joined an extremist group that believed in human sacrifice. An eventful night would join them once again. He wanted to prove his father that he could be responsible, but accepting a sketchy offer for the family business would lead to their downfall. They didn't talk for years after that, but today all has been forgiven and their bond grows stronger by the minute. Her gambling addiction led her to the darkest and lowest moments of her life, but with a little help from her sister and her boyfriend, she managed to get out of said situation and slowly had a more stable life. The kid wanted to make his grandfather proud and become the best basketball player the world would ever see. He overcame every obstacle in his way, from his childhood rivals to intergalactic ones he would never imagine. He became an icon to the entire world. She never imagined a card game could save the world from the apocalypse, but upon defeating the four horsemen and their demons in a game of briscas, she became a believer of the many ways the world could be saved. They became their generations Bonnie and Clyde, and it was all good for a while, but eventually a wound to the neck and the night under a blizzard would end the run finishing up as food for the rats inside an abandoned farm. She was just another lost millennial looking to live off the profession she studied for, but the little amount of opportunities and large amount of debt would drive her to the darkest corner in her life. Eventually things looked a bit up, but it still wasn't ideal. He was once a promising artist delivering work that anybody could be proud of, but spending 10 years on a new ambitious project led him to a madness he had never faced before. His wife helped him get out of said madness, and the project was left in development hell. She stood there recording her son as he fought a rival from across the street. Eventually, the rival took out his knife and stabbed her son. She just stood there recording and never took the necessary action to help her son. Their humor kept them happy even in the most difficult of times when they survived of hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. Fifteen years later, their economic situation is better. They're still happily married and have a child who has inherited their sense of humor. His father abandoned them when he was five. Thus, his mother worked 48 hours a week to give the best she could for her son. Later, he achieved his own goals and was forever thankful to her. 
when her benefits were taken away, he helped her as best as he could until her last breaths. He was often called names by hate-fueled ignorance, but one day his best friend stood up against those ignorance. Did he draw blood? Of course he did. But his best friend now finally grew the bravery to stand against any oppressor. It was a dance party, so they never stopped moving and shaking their bodies even when demonic entities came from the darkest depths of hell. They beat said demons in fantastic dance battles that would make the dance gods proud. He sat there all of his days writing, producing, and creating universes where many would lose themselves daily. Nobody ever knew who he was. He never put his name up front. He let the works speak for themselves. All of their days were filled with lots of outside fun until that intergalactic entity came into their lives. Then their lives turned into days of fear. Eventually they came together and fought said entity, but there was no guarantee of victory. She tried to stop him from reading the book, but she couldn't. Frogs started falling from the sky and fire started coming from the lands. She had briefly failed those she had sworn to protect, but then grew even more determination to save the world. The roach survived through many forms of chaos, both man-made and from nature. It later found a home in a 40-year-old couple's home until they passed away and many others came and passed. The roach lived eternally and it saw many of man's mistakes. They had planned to have a date night, but he forgot and spent the night watching movies with their kids. At first, she was mad at him, but upon reflection, she loved seeing him with their girls having fun. Later that night, when their girls were asleep, they made passionate love. They made their own business and money came in frequently. It came fast and fell fast, but they never invested in sustainable solutions that would help them across their lives. He walked across foreign streets learning about all forms of culture and having fun at the same time. At night, he went to a nightclub and accepted an invitation to the back side of it. There, he saw things he never would have imagined. Creatures and freaks of the night. Years of war eventually led humans to form intergalactic colonies across space. Their sins created chaos and destruction. Now, in space, they continue killing each other and any people who come across them. The wild cat roamed around all over town and eventually she came to a big suburban house. The owners tried to get rid of her, but she stood her ground and made those homeowners her bitches. She wanted to drive and her dad was willing to do so, but on her first try, she crashed into the front yard. She got scared, but that fear led her to determination, eventually getting her license and driving across the country. He was falsely accused, but nobody cared. He just served time for the longest, until somebody actually cared. Then he was released, but later falsely accused once more. Nobody's doing nothing this time. All he wanted was to protect his family after years of unjustified prosecution. But in the eyes of the law, emotions don't count, except on particular cases. So he was sentenced to serve life in jail because of the Saw-like scenario he left in front of the street. For once in his life, he took a risk and challenged those on top of him, but they weren't fond of that, so they stopped him and took him down a notch. But his passion and determination was too great, so he left and started his own business. Now, he's not wealthy in cash, but in joy. La nena de Ponce ahora cumple 11 y por dentro ella sabe lo que le espera no es fácil. Los chamacos de su era estarán tirando maíz y ella no sabrá qué responder porque aún se le hace difícil comunicar que no es hetero y que expresar su amor certero no será fácil. There we were, hanging out, drinking coffee, catching up, and laughing. It was a really nice time with a dear friend, but minutes later I found out it was all in a dream. That's the cruelty of sleep. He was already dying from cancer, so he asked his best friend to take care of him once he had passed. His friend agreed to help, but to say he was afraid would be an understatement. Sus zapatos eran impecables y para colmo se los regaló su madre. Por eso cada vez que alguien se acercaba los protegía como Kong con Ann Darrow. Un día fue él quien pisó áreas indeseadas y rápido trató de limpiar sus zapatos, pero estos perdieron su belleza original. 
They had never traveled to another country together. However, that escape would help make their relationship extra official. After that, they quickly got engaged and eventually started building a life of their own, a decision they would never regret. He was always afraid to get out of his comfort zone, but it wasn't until she came into his life that he truly spread his wings. He was cursed by his addiction, but it was that addiction that kept him going. It was a double-edged sword that he couldn't keep away. She would travel across the world, living off the inheritance left to her by her father. Seeing him suffer in those last days after so much work to keep her and her siblings going was a wake-up call she couldn't ignore. He was the nightmare that every kid would have every time they went to sleep. A surreal musical experience that would haunt every boogeyman known to exist. But nobody knew that under the dark and murderous exterior there lied a man filled with by tragedy and looking for real love. The young lad only wanted to be a normal kid, enjoying his life to the fullest, discovering life's wonders, but it was never meant to be. Before turning into a teen, he was forced to deal with devils nobody at his age should. Luckily, he came out unfazed and with stories to tell. She had never had to fight a person of authority, but this time said person went too far. Thus, she finally said no and defended her friends, eventually ending things in a fight that would involve teachers, parents, and more kids in a revolt-like event she would never forget. They were never meant for this. They had everything going for them, but they let themselves be manipulated and peer pressured into unfathomable acts of violence that would forever cement them as a part of Hollywood history. Billy was a young boy destined for greatness, but he never put in the necessary work to achieve the goals he had set out in his life. Instead, he opted for a simpler life, one with less stress and more happiness. There were never enough hugs, kisses, chats, and laughs to stop it. John would inevitably be betrayed by his best friend and the lover. At first, he thought of cheating out of anger and even cocked at it some other man. But the pain was too overwhelming, and he could never go through with it. They met randomly at a bar, thanks to a mutual friend. It was a nice night and numbers were exchanged. The relationship went a bit rocky from there, cause neither of them had fully formed identities. But little by little, they helped each other grow, and in time, built a life together. This weekend would be their first time traveling outside of their country, and one that would truly determine how much the relationship would last. At first, both feared their destination, but upon arrival, things went smooth. Nothing but fun. Later, they would feel nostalgic. Upon learning about her soon-to-come leg amputation, Jane quickly thought of the difficulties that would come with it. But she found light laughs and positives by imagining herself as a machine gun wielding badass in the zombie apocalypse like Planet Terror's Cherry Darling. The rattlesnake of greed took over his body. It was an act of the devil that nobody expected but would soon feel in years filled with nothing but chaos and death. Some would call these the apocalypse, others would simply call them the act of an evil man. El sueño la quería matar, pero su determinación la mantenía despierta. Una letra más, una palabra más, una oración más, otro párrafo más, y poco a poco completaba su próximo trabajo literario, y una meta nueva, cumplida. School was over. Now it was their time to become adults in a time where one truly becomes an adult when you find a job to sustain yourself with because you're forced to live with your parents due to the huge debt you'll end up with and the very little job opportunities. Welcome to his nightmare, filled with surrealistic monsters and ghouls and psychedelic Harley driving demons that frequent strip clubs where electronic and trap music come together. This devilish nightmare of his one cannot simply put into 280 characters, but this might suffice a bit. This party of theirs would serve as a celebration of all of their achievements, some might simply be birthdays. But the sole purpose of said parties was to escape reality, be it through drinks, chats, laughs, dances, and even board games. Escape was the goal, and they would succeed. 
He rode his bike with passion every single day, hours of grinding and practicing said passion. He eventually met some of his heroes and now he continues to ride, while managing his own business inside the industries he's always loved.